Hi guys. Blake and Phil here tonight with Lily's Landing Resort and Marina on beautiful Upper Lake Tanicomo. It is Wednesday, the 28th of July, and we are going to do a night fishing one cast tonight. Ah, so we are here on the boat. We've all got our waders on. We were planning on hopping out of the boat once the water drops all the way out. Um, we are going to strip some streamers on the fly rods tonight. I am throwing a five weight, nine foot fly rod with uh, just floating line on it and a uh, about a four foot leader that has 2x tippet. And I'm going to have a black pine squirrel, which I'd try to show you that to the camera, but uh, you probably couldn't see it anyway. Uh, it's basically a shad fly if you've used any of our shad flies before, except it's black instead of white. And Phil is throwing a black and red leech pattern. What do you got 2x tippet on as well? Yeah. He's got 2x tippet on. Seven weight, nine foot. Seven weight, nine foot rod. And uh, I'll start off by just kind of showing you guys the... Uh, way we're casting these out here and talk about it a little bit and then we're gonna go lights out that way we can see what we're doing on the water and we'll light up the fish when we catch them but uh so as I described I've just got floating line and I guess I have a little more than probably got about five or six foot of 2x leader there that was Levi calling <laughs> they're up there at the dam right now yeah um so, I've got about six foot, five or six foot of 2x tippet there, just connected straight to my floating line. And uh, I like to pull out a good amount of line. I like to get my cast out there pretty far. Um, at nighttime is a great way to learn how to cast a fly rod because you can't see what you're doing. You have to literally rely on the feel of the rod loading. But I get my line out there as far as I can and uh, I let my I let my rod tip above the water for a second and put a kind of a bend in the line, a little loop from the small amount of current that's going by. And then I set the tip of my rod down in the water. That's going to allow me to feel those fish really easily whenever they bite that. And uh, at nighttime is a lot different than daytime streamer fishing. So I just try to leave that loop in my line. So that's the reason we have to turn the light out eventually is because I like to be able to see my line on the water but I just try to keep that same loop and I point my rod tip at where I think the fly is and you do real slow strips and then let that bend in your line build up again and another real slow strip and it's a real slow way of fishing but it's pretty effective at night time how deep of water are we fishing? Uh, right now, the boat's probably setting over Two three, feet. maybe three foot of water. And the water we're fishing out into is the channel through the narrows. And so it may be five foot deep over there in the channel that we're casting to. And we're just letting those streamers swing, just giving them a little bit of action. But really, those fish hit it a lot of the time as it's swinging with that bend in the line that I was trying to describe without seeing it. No fish on the first cast. And uh, generally, I like to throw it out at a 90 degree angle straight out in front of me. But depending on what the current's doing or how fast it is, sometimes I'll move down at a 45 degree angle and cast downstream a little bit. When the water's off, waiting around at the dam or just about anywhere, you really don't need a sinking line. Whenever we first pulled up here, I was uh, using a very slow sinking five foot leader on the front of it when the current was a little bit stronger just to get that fly down a little bit. There's a fish. Maybe I don't need to see what I'm doing to catch a fish. 
Those lights are very blinding, especially when you're out here in the fog at night. You really can't see anything in front of you. Yep. They're gonna have the water turned off for a while at night. It is super fun to get up there at the dam and wait out. Go up there during the day and learn it before you. Go. Yeah, that's a good idea. Phil is saying that go up there during the day when the water's off and walk around and kind of learn the areas. But uh, especially whenever we're at this part of the summer when it's super hot, long sunlight days these fish seem to feed pretty good at night during the summer and the water off is a great time to get out and strip these streamers i usually use the pine squirrel or i use the one they call the pms which i'm pretty sure leonard kinney's the one who came up with that one isn't he yep. yep and the pms really just looks like a longer version of the pine squirrel it's made with a little bit different material but Uh, and the colors I switched between, uh, almost, oh, there was a, there was a hit, that was a, there it was again. Dang it. Um, I always start off with black, because I don't know why, but black seems to usually be the go-to color for me. Uh, white or olive. Between those three colors, I can almost always find fish. Now the reds and the darker purples also seem to work pretty good. Uh, two nights ago, and well actually last night too, I was up at the dam and I was either throwing a red, dark red pine squirrel or a black pine squirrel all night. I fished from, there was another hit, they're just bumping it. Um, <clears throat> I fished from 1 a.m. till 5.30 this morning when the light started coming up. And uh, last night, I went down to the last staircase below the boat ramp and walked across to the Trophy Run Island. That fish came up and ate my fly line. And I walked across and I fished the deep water from the boat ramp down to the staircase all night. Caught a lot of fish and I did land one. I didn't have any way to measure it or weigh it, but uh, when he, when I hooked into him, it took about, oh, probably eight or 10 minutes to land. And he was running up and down the lake and pulling me all the way out in my backing. I thought it was a brown, but it turned out to be a tank of a rainbow. Probably in the five or six pound range maybe 23 inches long. How far away from the bank is that? How far away from the bank are we? Yeah. Um, I'd say we're about... Further than what I probably want to be. Yeah. Potentially, yeah. Is, are we just spot locked or you got the anchor out? Anchor. I don't know, how far can you cast? I'd say we're 80 feet away from the bank. Well, if you're trying stripping streamers for your first time, ever at night sometime in the near future something that helped me was i picked a spot up at the dam that i didn't want to fish and i turned my headlight on now 
trout do get spooked by the light so we try to keep our headlights off the water especially where we're fishing at as much as possible but I just picked a spot turned on my headlight and I cast it out in front of me and I'd wait and watch that loop in the line kind of start going downstream and I just got an idea for how long it took before I needed to set my rod tip in the water and that was just something that helped me kind of learn because having that loop in the line and getting that fly to swing especially when the water's not moving very fast is important you want me to pull the anchor up and move us over yeah I don't think I'm getting any swing in my line here. There we go. It might back up. Yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh. What? That was a big fish. Oh my gosh. He just broke my line. Hmm. I felt him hit it like a train too. I don't know, oh, Phil's got one. I'm gonna light you up. Since I'm not fishing at the moment. I'm just gonna turn the camera. Oh man, it's real small. Ah. What is this deal? <laughs> Phil, throwing fish at me. Yeah. <laughs> Super small. You like that little leech, though. Yeah. Oh, I just missed a big fish. Oh my gosh. In the net. Good shot. I'm gonna have to buy more black pine squirrels. I'm down to my last one. So at nighttime, you do not have to worry about the trout being able to see the line. So that's why we're throwing that 2x tippet, which is like the equivalent of 10 or 12 pounds. I can't remember which one exactly. Almost like being in the water better for uh, trying to manipulate your fly line off the bottom of a boat at night. It's a little tricky. Oh, I can't believe I missed that fish. Yeah. Well, he was real big and he probably bit it and turned at the same time as I set the hook. There's another one. Jumping over your line. Whenever I'm letting that fly swing and I've got my rod tip down in the water, any movement, anything that feels even 
the slightest bit different I set the hook on it because sometimes they just come up on it and just barely lip it There's another one. Oh. Another thing that learns, or that helps to learn, is how to strip set. Oh, there, there, he's still there. So strip setting is where you keep your rod tip in the water. Double. Doubles, or doubled up. Strip setting is where you keep your rod tip down in the water and you pull directly back on the line instead of down and up with the rod tip. Um, I, it took me a second to break the habit and I still don't do it 100% of the time. But yours is a little bigger than mine. Yeah, I got a, I got a small fry here. So when I first started doing streamer fishing on the fly rod at night, I wanted to use those big, super big streamers. And I'm not saying that you can't catch them on them. What I found was that when the water's off, they get heavy with water and they sink too fast and they hit the bottom in your swing. And you don't want your streamer actually dragging the bottom. As it moves slowly, you want it to kind of drift down, kind of suspended in the water column as it swings. If it swings down too hard and hits the bottom, it probably won't catch many fish. Now I'm sure if I spent some time tying or pick some out, some bigger uh, streamers that were not tied with weight in the middle of them or not with big beads on the front, you could probably accomplish the same kind of drift but so far in my experience I've found that these smaller leech pine squirrels PMS's stuff like that seem to be a lot more effective for me trout like to feed upwards at night they'll look up in the water column and they'll even suspend and so sometimes they don't hammer these things there's not like they're chasing it they're just kind of looking up and it drifts over their head and they come up and they mouth it Ooh. Looks like a solid hit. Yeah, it was. Well, I grabbed something in the boat. Grab the camera. <laughs> oh, that was a hit. He barely hit it. Got him. Uh, I don't think so. He's just putting up a lot of fight. Oh, another dink. We caught the knife and down there when we first started. Yeah, we did. <laughs> 16, 17. Before we started the video tonight, we were kind of waiting for the water to drop down a little farther. It, they had just turned it off at 10. They were supposed to turn it off at 9, but we started below the narrows. And uh, we caught a few, a few nice ones in the 16, 17 inch range. But that is one thing with night fishing. There is, I believe at least, a percentage of these bigger fish that may be more nocturnal than they are anything else. And so, there is a higher probability of catching a big fish at night, especially 
during the summer. And fall. Do what? And fall. And yeah, and well, and fall whenever the the big browns run up lake. We just don't have a lot of opportunities with the water being off. Yeah, this this is the exact same thing. At least that happened last summer. We got to that August time frame. They had gotten the lake levels down on the big lakes above and below us. And for almost the month of August last year, we had water off a lot during the at least half part of the day and then at night. And so far, we seem to be following the same trend here for this year. And, you know, I'm not going to say that you can't get out here at night whenever they're running a half unit or one unit because I've done that too in strip streamers. It's a lot more casting. You got to use way to do what? Oh, it'd be extremely... oh, I'm I'm just even saying like going up and waiting at the dam yeah. with a half unit or one unit running. It uh, it's a lot more casting. You've got to use weighted leaders. Uh, you don't get as much time with your fly swinging. Uh, but you can certainly still do it. But this is definitely the the, the prime time to be out here stripping streamers when the water turns off. Oh. <laughs> he bit it as soon as it hit the water, didn't he? And I've got to constantly remind myself to leave time between my strips, strip slowly. It's hard when you do daytime fishing, you're used to putting more action on things to come out here and go this slow. But uh, the slower you go, usually the better the, the bite ratio is. You are gonna, that was me underneath your line. If you're gonna go out and scout the dam out with the water off during the day so that you can go night fishing, I suggest that you remember where all the deep pockets are. Mm -hmm. Not only for your safety, but if you can remember where those deep pockets are, then those are the places to go, uh, go to and cast your streamers into and let them drift through those deeper pocket just like we're doing right now we've got the boat kind of parked on the edge of the flat and we're casting into the channel at the narrows and uh, those fish will school up in those pockets whenever the water turns off then you just got to get your leader length right and your way to your streamer and you'll be catching some fish Might sign off and then we can add. Yeah. Some things. Okay. Well, it's kind of easy to lose track out here at night. We might already be at 30 minutes, so there's a little little switch up, a little nighttime fishing for you guys. We uh, thank you for watching. Like and share us on Facebook, and we'll be uh, back out here tomorrow to do it again. Thanks, guys. So we've been out for about an hour and a half waiting and we probably caught 30 or 40, probably 40 between the two of us. Nothing big. This is, what, about 16? Yeah, he put up a good fight though. 
Um, nothing very big tonight. Um, except the one lake probably broke off. Good. Yeah. But it's, it was a lot of fun. We caught a lot of fish. Just, just nothing, nothing very big. So we're gonna head in. It's uh, about about 1:30 in the morning, and um, my feet are cramping up. <laughs> How about your? Uh, not quite yet. But I'm, I'm my uh, shoulder's pretty sore from the last three nights of doing this in a row. Oh, okay. Well, all right. <laughs> Okay, well I hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna head in. <laughs>